everyone, it's Sarada and I scribble and today I am going to share my art supplies with you guys. Uh, it's been about a year since I did an updated or since I did my first art supply video so I figured I could do an updated one because I accumulated a lot of new, a, wow I can speak, a lot of new interesting things last year. Uh, my collection is still pretty small and I like that because I feel so bad whenever I'm not using my art supplies. Uh, so I'm just gonna get right into it and start with my coloring supplies I guess. And for that I have a few different things. I have a water-based marker called the Stabilo. And there are two types of this marker. I guess three technically. Where is it there? Um, this is the pen 68 and this is the point 88 and it's the fine 04. I'm not sure why it says that because they don't have any other t styles. But basically one is a felt tip and the other is a more liner like tip. And the only reason why I have this one was because it wasn't available in regular felt. They also have this which is their neon line. It says neon on the pen. And they have a few of those. Uh, I really like using this with these with my bullet journal and uh, they work pretty good in sketchbooks too because they don't bleed through the paper too much. Um, you can make fake watercolor with them if you scribble on plastic first and then pick it up with a brush and a little bit of water so that's cool too. Next we have my alcohol markers and I have these which are extras I bought. They are by um, Tiger, Flying Tiger, uh, which is that Danish-based store that everyone is ranting and raving about because they have cheap stuff and it's awesome. Uh, I bought some extra colors there because I didn't have them in my Spectrum Nara set, which is this one. Uh, it is the 24 Lights. They have a few different sets, I think four. I got the lights. There's a lot of reds and grays in this one. They're okay. I've never really been a marker person, uh, alcohol marker person I should say. They smell really bad which is my main reason for not using them more. I feel really bad about that as I mentioned before, I feel bad when I don't use my art supplies. But I have used them in a few sketchbooks. Because I have so few I don't really want to use them for full illustrations because it just, um, it's a very limited palette and there's not a lot of good colors for the type of art I do. They're great for floral illustrations, like this set would be great for doing floral stuff because there are so many reds, there are plenty of greens. And then there's this one which is a fluorescent yellow that I don't really understand, but mm. anyway, so my alcohol markers. Next I have these which are my Posca paint markers. And I have two different sets. I have one set which is the fine tip I think and it's called the 3M. And then I have a medium tip, which is the 5M, the typing is there. And one is a pastel set, and the other is sort of a regular color set. Oh, come here. The pens range from, let's see, the fine one ranges from 0.8 to 1.3 millimeters, and the medium ranges from 0.8 to no, 1.8 to 2.5 millimeters. So it's a pretty good range if you have both of these styles because one can sort of follow the other. This is a tip difference, sort of a double the size on this one. And I really like these because they produce a solid color. They don't smell and there's a shaker ball in all of them, which I really like. Um, so yeah. Uh, lastly, in my sort of pen marker set are these, focus, thank you, which are the Sakura Souffles, which is an opaque gel pen. Uh, you paint with it and then you wait for it to dry and it becomes opaque. They're pastel in color, this set in particular, uh, so they dry very light compared to what they come at us. Originally I had bought half the set off of eBay and then uh, my friend got me the whole set for uh, Christmas so I have extras of some of the pens and I have the entire set. 
and I really enjoy using these in my sketchbook for uh, details and uh, things like that. It just really makes a nice pop of color. Next, I guess I can do pencils, okay, crayons. Uh, first is this, which is uh, China markers. And I got most of my art supplies, majority of my art supplies comes from either eBay or uh, I opened it in the wrong end, but either eBay or Panjiro, which is a local art supply store, and uh, then my art to art supply store. Panjiro is a bit more, um, I don't know, crafty, hobby catered. But these are China markers, and uh, I got myself a set of 12, and they are a peel. Uh, peel pen, so you pull down this string and then you peel off the paper. I have actually sharpened mine. They look like this. When you get them new, I got some duplicates. Uh, but these are the colors. They're really great for sketching. It's like, it's a crayon, basically. It's a greasy, oil, not oily, but it's a grease crayon. Uh, really hard to smudge. Uh, great for making large art. And I really like them. Um, at least for figure studies and things like that. They're not really great because you can't erase them and stuff. You can't do like line art and stuff on top of them. Uh, next set of pens is this, or pencils, which is my Staedtler Carrot Aquarel 36 set. And it's a watercolor pencil, an affordable one that I've had for more than 10 years. The set doesn't look like this anymore. I think the box is blue now. Uh, but the set is still available, I think in larger quantities too. But there's 36 watercolor pencils in here. I've used them all, uh, some more than others. And I really like them. They're a very cheap alternative. And I have the color swatch here. You can see uh, the variety of color. And I like them. They're a good cheap alternative. Or a budget. I shouldn't say cheap. Cheap feels wrong. It makes it sound like it's bad, but it's a very nice budget uh, alternative for those who can't spend a lot of money on nice pencils. And then this is the last of my pencils. This is the Derwent Ink Tense 72 set of ink pencils. And I got this for Christmas from my dear, dear, amazing mother. So you have all these colors to work with. There is a huge range. I've used these pens a lot. I haven't sharpened a single one of them, so I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be able to use them up. It is crazy how long lasting they are. Now I haven't done any huge artwork with them, and a lot of my, my uh, artwork with these have been like watercolor-esque paintings, so very light pastel -y stuff. Nothing really intense, so I haven't been using them uh, a lot in that sense, if that even makes sense. That's... Have I mentioned I have trouble talking today? <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoy them. They are pretty much my new favorite art supply. It is crazy how good they are. <laughs> but yeah, so... 72 pencils that will s outlive me, most likely. Um, so those are the pencils. Now onto paints. And for paints I have, I've actually removed one type of paint from my paint set because it's the, it's called a hobby paint, so it's more durable. These paints here are uh, Panjiro's own brand of uh, studio paints. It's acrylic and it's matte, so um, if you want it glossy, just varnish it with a glossy finish. Uh, I really, really like these paints for doing my galaxy paintings. It's what I've been using them for. I bought extra black because this little tube didn't last me long for all those black backgrounds. Uh, favorite color has definitely been this one, which is the primary cyan. Lastly, for paints, I have this, which is my watercolor. And I don't think they have changed since the last time I shared these. Oh no! God damn it, I opened it upside down. This here is the Winsor Newton Cotman Pocket Plus. I think their current pocket looks a bit different. I don't know, this set seems rare somehow. It's not that common to see it in shops. Uh, it has a 12 
half pan set when you get it. I have since exchanged three colors. These up here are Winsor Newton Common for three others, which is the Indigo, the Permanent Rose, and this one, which is Mauve, I think. But basically in the starter set you get like two blues, two yellows, two reds, two greens, and then you get uh, ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber. So you get a really good range of colors, both cool tones and warm tones to mix. It's a, gr a great field set. You get this little brush, which I also really <laughs> like, even though I haven't used it. It's uh, still glued, but um, it's great for a travel kit. And, uh, and uh, you can remove the palettes, which I really like. Oh, I've never removed this one too many times since. So. I haven't removed this one too many times, so it's stuck. But it makes cleaning really easily because you just take the palettes out and go rinse them under the faucet and they're clean and you can tuck them back in. Um, since it is a pocket style, you're supposed to, there's supposed to be a blue sort of thing here that you can stick your thumb in. But when you set it on your desk, it sort of folds up like this because it's uh, so tight. So I just removed that because I prefer having mine sitting like this. Uh, so that's the Winsor Newton set. And then these colors here, I'm just going to open one of them. This one is flipped for some reason. These here are the Schminke uh, Academy colors, which is basically their student line. And I really enjoy these colors too. They're very glossy. Uh, you probably can't tell what colors I have except for that one. But it's... a uh, a purple, a blue, a green, and a black. So those are my watercolors. Now let's move on to some more tools and stuff. Stray bits, I should say. Uh, for varnishing my acrylic paintings, I use this, which is the Liquitex Professional High Gloss Varnish. High Gloss Varnish. Can't talk. Have I said that too many times already? Uh, I really like it. It's great. It uh, works really well. And uh, what else? Ooh, I have another tube of paint I forgot. I have this lonely tube of Winsor Newton designer gouache in zinc white, which I uh, use use which I use for stars on my uh, watercolor paintings. If I or highlights in general on my watercolor paintings, they were for stars when I did galaxies. Um, I have. A tube of ink. It's a student brand, uh, or a student, well, student brand. Yeah, the Fonsen Bourgeois. Bourgeois. Oh, my French is bad. So bad. Um, but yeah, black ink. I used it for Inktober. And then I have this, which is liquid pearls, dimensional pearlescent paint in white opal. And technically, you're using it right out of the bottle. You can dot it on and get these dimensional pearl-like stuff. I think it's used mostly for scrapbooking and card decorating and stuff. But if you water it down and cover your paintings in it, you get a very nice silvery shimmery effect, which is what I've been using it for. Uh, along with my ink, I also have two dip pens. I have a few different tips for them, but these are the ones currently mounted. I also have some liners, a click eraser. Yeah, Click Eraser by Pentel. I have these two, which are the Unipin Fine Line, one in 0.1 and one in 0.3. I have a Stettler Pigment Liner in 05, in brown actually, or sepia. I didn't like this one as much as I'd hoped, so I have been using it a lot. I have a Pigma Brush, Archival Ink, also in brown or sepia. Uh, this tip brush tip. haven't been using that enough either. And the Pentel Pocket Brush, which I am probably not going to use anymore. I do have, I think I have two reserve cartridges, cartridges left. I think, yeah, I have two cartridges left. Uh, so once I've used those up, I'm probably not going to repurchase just because it wasn't really my thing. Uh, it was fun to try, but uh, it wasn't for me. Uh, what else? 
Yeah, some other stray tools. I have, ooh, brushes, watercolor brushes. I totally forgot about those. I have them in one of my jars here. And this here is Panjiro Hobby Brand. I used this for uh, varnishing before, the biggest brush I had at the time. And they're the Studio XL. It was a set bought forever ago. It feels, it's, prob it's probably synthetic. It is synthetic. I have no real hair brushes. Um, but it feels a lot like um, hog bristle or something like that. It's very, very strawy, very stiff. And, um, let's see. Oh, 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 sorry, sweetie. This big one is a new edition. Elko, Germany. It's squirrel imitation, I think. And uh, this one is the one I use for varnishing now. And uh, I also use it to water, uh, to water douse, to douse my watercolor paper in water. Mm. Uh, sometimes, but mainly it's used for varnishing. I just needed a big brush that I could make a lot of strokes with. My paintings are pretty small to begin with, so having one of these just makes the process very quick and easy. And then I have, I have this one, which is a Dale Rowney System 3 Round 30. This one is probably squirrel imitation too. Holds a lot of water. And then we have two separate sets. I have these black ones, which is a generic brand paintbrush. I can move that one because it's the same size as one of the others. And then I have these blue ones. These are Panjiro brand generic brushes. You can see they're almost the same except for this style of the handle, like blue and black. Uh, these I use exclusively for watercolor. These, which have a few different shapes. I have like one rounded flat, one completely flat, a couple of completely round brushes. Uh, these I use for acrylics. And then I have these two, which are water brushes. They're by Pentel Aquash, or they are the Pentel Aquash. I have one with a broad tip, and this is also the compact travel size brush. Holds two thirds of the water of an original, or a full size. And um, this one is a fine tip. So, hold them up next to each other. There you can see the difference in the fine and broad. Or broad. They do have a broad one too, but the fine and thick. Oh, I don't even know. Medium. And those are my brushes. I use a few different types of rulers. I have some French curves. And I have this huge ruler too, with an edge, so I can line it up against the edge of a paper and then get a straight horizontal line. I also use this, which is a kneaded eraser. I tucked it into a GBA a cartridge box. Yeah. That, I have a compass. This sharpener is probably the best purchase I've made in I don't know how long. See, I know I have an unsharpened pencil down here. So there are two holes in this. Uh, the first hole sharpens the pen to a stop. And once you get to the stop, it just simply stops sharpening it. But then you get, like, you it removes all the wood. The end hole is larger. And then you stick it in the second one and it sharpens the lead to a very, very fine point. Like that. Why are you having trouble focusing today? There you go. So I really like that. It's a KUM, K-U-M, automatic long point. Yeah, the brand is KUM. And it's really easy to empty. You just lift the lock and it's on a hinge. You just lift the lid. Lock is actually how you spell lid in Swedish. Um, and back here, there are two extra blades for when these ones get dull. So that's great. Best purchase I've made. I have this, which is a cheap corner punch off of eBay. I'm sure you know what a corner punch is, so I don't know why I'm demonstrating it, but you stick a piece of paper in it, 
and it chops off the corner and makes it round. This is the tape I use for taping down my watercolor paintings. It's blue painter's tape. It is ridiculously expensive. It says precision mask outdoor even, so it's great for outdoor use as well. I think that's it for tools. Now I do have a few more fine liners. I have a lot of uh, mechanical pencils and stuff like that. But all of the, these things are in my uh, regular pencil case, like this one. And I'm going to show you those contents once I get my new pencil cases, which should be within a month. On to papers and sketchbooks. Okay, so I have two pieces of paper. Pieces of paper, no, but I have two types of paper that I use. Uh, this one is the one I use the most. It's a 200 gram watercolor paper by Canson Montville, so it's a student grade paper. Works really well for me because I don't really drench my papers, so it doesn't warp too much when I work with it. Great for use with the ink tents. And it has a very light texture. It's smoother on one side than the other. Um, I really like it. And then this one is the... Let's see if I can get it at an angle. There you go. This one is far more textured. textured. This is Hanemula, and it is their Britannia line. There. It has a great texture, like it's really ribbed, but if I want it to be smoother, I can always flip it to the back side because it's smooth or smooth, or it's not quite, uh, it's not completely flat, but it's definitely smoother than the other side. So those are the two types of watercolor paper I use. And here are some of my sketchbook and uh, doodle supplies, I guess. This is from Flying Tiger. It is a sort of tall note phone book or phone number sketchbook, I guess. Um, it has three different colors of paper in it. And once I get to the middle, I'm going to do a sketchbook tour on this because there's just so many pages in it. It is super thick. These, which are Panjero's Tilda brand. Well, Tilda is the brand. It's distributed by Panjero, which are really cute tiny notebooks that cost too much money. <laughs> and they're uh, sewn together. They're a 40 page. And uh, the paper is slightly yellowed. I prefer drawing on tinted paper because just stark white hurts my eyes. <laughs> Does that make sense? So um, these are the tiny travel sketchbooks I use. I use these when I leave the house. And this is my big in-house sketchbook. It's uh, thick. It's a 90 gram paper, uh, slightly heavier than printer paper. And um, I use it for sketching a lot. Um, and sort of telling stories and working out larger, messier thumbnails and character studies and things like that. These tiny ones I use more for finished-ish drawings, so they look a lot nicer. This one is my messy, whatever I want sketchbook, so it has a little bit of everything. Um, and then I have this, which was the type of sketch pad I used before. If you've looked at my um, sketchbook tours, you've seen a lot of these, or the green version of this. This is the sketch version. The other one is the doodler, the drawer version. Basically the paper is slightly different in the two um, sketchbooks. This one, this paper is more rough. The other one is more smooth and it's also blue tinted. This one has a less tint. Uh, I use this one for a lot of figure studies. Um, mainly for figure studies, I should say. I haven't done any in a while. Uh, but that is what I use this for mainly. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. Do you want me to review any of this stuff? Because uh, during the giveaway I asked for feedback and a lot of you said you wanted to see more product reviews and the main reason why I don't do product reviews is because I don't necessarily have the money to spend on all of these different kinds of art supplies. That That's one of the reasons why I don't do subscription boxes. Even though I'd love to do it, I simply don't have the money to spend on it. But if you want me to review any of the things I showed you today, let me know in comments down below and I'll try to do it. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please do if you haven't, take a moment to subscribe. You can hit that button, join in for more fun art videos. 
Uh, you can also follow me on my social media. Links to those will be down below as well in the description. As well as to my stores, Redbubble and Etsy. If you want to purchase some of my stuff, go check those stores out. And until next time, keep on scribbling, friends. Bye!